this painting here is an amazing effort for color. Um, it's got a really realistic color climb and color build. You've got purples in the eye sockets. You've got uh, pinks on the cheeks. You've got greens in the under eyelids. And you've got greens in the skin. However, there are some really, really off things about it. Some uncanny stuff. When you overdo um, the natural patterns and colors on skin, especially skin that is as pale as this. This is very pale skin uh, because we're seeing lots of cools and greens shine through. It means the essential skin itself doesn't have that deep a pigmentation. So what happens is um, the skin is translucent and so we see the skin come through. If it turns out to be too translucent, if you're over exaggerating these purples, it'll look like she's wearing purple eyeshadow. That's the only equivalent of it in the real world. It'll look like she smeared a bunch of green concealer, corrector concealer, all over her forehead because that's the green that you have here. The pinks here are completely off and the proportion itself. So whenever you have realism and realistic skin on incorrect proportions, what you get is the uncanny. This is uncanny. It's unsettling. Um, that's, it's not... That, that's not an insult, by the way. That's actually what's happening here. There is something called the uncanny valley, where you over-render and push rendering as far as possible, and I think that's what you added to the description here. You push rendering as far as possible. Um, uh, you will have, uh, on top of bad proportions, which is the neck, the neck is completely off and there's no jawline, um, you will have something that looks uncanny. So realistic skin, on improper proportions, or unfamiliar proportions, is uncanny. All right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fix these proportions. I think what you did is you flipped the canvas um, for this. That's, I think that's what you did. Um, that's very dangerous. Be careful with that. Flipping the canvas can also lead to uncanny because what happens is it doesn't look natural. Uncanny, when it's too symmetrical, it looks uncanny. There is a certain asymmetry naturally on faces um, that we have just the, you know the natural way that human face human faces are built even on the skeletal level there's asymmetry so never bring in too much symmetry and never flip the canvas it's just a crutch you have to depend on you can't flip the canvas traditionally so um, don't don't depend too much on flipping the canvas uh, digitally all right now the neck is too thick I can't really do this in liquify I've got to get rid of some of this got to get rid of some of this neck <clears throat> okay, because she is a girl, so she needs a bit more of a feminine neck. <clears throat> Just like this. Um, what happened before is that you didn't have a jawline from which the neck emerges. So the neck, as you know, emerges at the point where your jawline is pretty much means everyone put your hand on your neck and put put it in that corner area where your jawline touches your neck so the jawline is that thing under your chin it's like the edge of your chin leading all the way back to the side of your neck so you can see for girls that's pretty much where your jaw where your neck starts is where your jaw ends so you want to find where that jaw it's not where your cheeks end because cheeks have fat in them it's not this it's this right here so that means that not only do we have to make the neck a little more slender but we have to bring in a jawline and a jawline is that actual separation between the skull and the jaw. There are two separate areas on the skeletal structure. Also her expression is a bit uncanny. She doesn't seem to be um, like her, 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 her mouth is pretty stiff so what I'm gonna do is just give it no expression and her mouth is open so again it, it seems like you're trying to do something with that or try to like a natural mouth openness and what it's done is it's again it's added to that uncanny like unfamiliar expression like what is she doing so the more unfamiliar what's happening in the image or with proportions the more uncanny everything is so I'm gonna get rid of any kind of expression here because it is adding to the uncanny because the eyes are not part of the expression so don't just move the eyebrows and make the lips smile and expect an expression that's not how it works it, it, the eyes need to be a part of the expression the nostrils need to be a part of it and if they are not again it'll look like those Japanese um, Android robots they've been making lately that don't have eyes that they, you know that robot smiles but it doesn't really smile with its eyes 
So it makes it look seriously uncanny. You can just Google that Japanese robot girl. It looks so creepy when you look at her. It's like nightmare fuel because it it's just so it's trying so hard to be human and you know something is off about it even though all the realism signatures are, are all there where they have to be. The ears need to be a little bit longer in between. I'm just trying to take away from that robotic kind of expression happening. Remember girls have a natural brow bone. So I'm just trying to give her like a natural stern face. What I call this expression is a standing in line uh, expression. You really don't have much of an expression or an opinion. Maybe a little bit of boredom. But the open mouth is kind of throwing off a lot. And what I mean when I say smiling with the eyes is that the eyes have to be a little bit more squinted. The, 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 the wrinkles have to be there a little bit because the whole muscles work as one big cascade. Like they, they, one affects the other all the way up until the eye. So I'm trying to pull away from that, trying to give her like a model-esque type of expression. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's just take a look at the before and after with the changes I've made now. And you'll see sort of what I mean, and then I'll change the colors, but before, after. So I removed the expression, made it a little bit more natural. And I um, basically brought the jawline down and separated it so it's not... The way you guys draw is as if the skull of the head is one piece of skeleton. It's not. The skull of the, of the human body is two pieces. It's the, the top part, the cranium, where the, brain is, where the brain is, and the sinuses, and the eye sockets, and the top teeth. And then you have a line, the bottom teeth, and that entire lower jaw structure is a completely separate skeletal structure. They're not connected. So you need to show that. Okay, the neck can get a little bit thicker if you wanted it to be, but I'm sticking on the slender side compared to where we had before. Okay, so this feels a lot more natural. It feels like she's really standing normally over here. It seems like her shoulders should be somewhere up here. It's like a deliberate, uncanny kind of expression. Do not push rendering if you haven't fixed your anatomy and your proportions. Please, everyone, write that back at me. All right. <clears throat> try to keep the chat discussion relating to the class. There's a reason why I ask you guys to write things back at me so that I know that everyone's paying attention. Um, I am going to be a little bit more strict this time about who's deviating the conversation if you're here to chat. It's not a chat. It's not a chat room for those purposes. Japanese Android smiling. It looks really, really weird. Okay, so there's that. That's kind of what happens, but she seems to have a normal neck. And there's that. Really, really uncanny. It's There's something about it that doesn't feel natural. The eyes don't seem to have any involvement in whatever happens down here, and that's not how human muscles work. They all just seem to be stuck in the same angle. Okay. <clears throat> So remember that, that, that if you're going to try an expression and you're going to slab a bunch of realism onto that skin tone and on that, um, and, and, and just, just completely push the rendering enough that it almost looks like a photo, photograph of skin on top of really, really wonky proportions, you're, you're doing yourself the biggest disservice because it'll just creep people out more. The more realistic you're going to paint that skin, the less realistic that anatomy and that proportion, the more creeped out people will be because the deeper in the uncanny valley you, ref you will find yourself. All right? So before, after. The color issues, however, are, um, they're kind of super saturated. So what I'm going to do as a whole is I'm just going to desaturate completely. And as I desaturate, yes, paler skin does have a tilt towards the cool. So the paler the person, the more purple the reds in the skin. That's just the standard rule. The warmer your skin is, the darker your skin, the more tanned you are, 
the more um, orange the blush that you add to a tan skin tone character. But over here, this is too cool. It doesn't look natural anymore. So we want to bring in some yellow because whether you're uh, dark skinned or light skinned, you're still going to have that level of yellow to the skin. That's just the natural skin, the way humans have. It's like yellow is the most natural color for the body to create. Yellow is in, is in the way we store fat. Yellow is in the skin tone. Yellow is in the cholesterol. Yellow is in the pee, yellow is in the poo, yellow is in the, in, in, in the liver, yellow is in the bile. It's just like the natural color of the body. Like humans are yellow. Um, of course it's not yellow yellow, that's like a very pale, um, washed out, very translucent yellow, but that's kind of what you want to do. The more purple you are, the more it looks like she's an alien. So our natural skin tone is affected by our natural biology. So she needs to be pushed over into the warms a little bit. So this was zero. See, very, very purple, almost like she's holding her breath, or the early stages of that one girl in Willy Wonka before she has the gum. I need to push that towards the yellow. It'll look a little bit green compared to where it was before, but this is a much more natural shade than where it was before. Before, after. The neck is still a little bit th thin here, but I'm not changing it, just compared to where it was before. What I am going to do now with a color layer is I'm just going to adjust all the colors so that I'm going to find the natural skin tone color and I'm just going to throw it over the forehead. You have way too many greens in the forehead, my friend. Just just step away from that green. <clears throat> the green in the body exists in areas where the skin is completely translucent. Translucent, not transparent. So that means that the greens are going to exist somewhere down here under the eye. Okay, that's because the skin isn't being reinforced by excessive muscle and bone. The skin under the eye has nothing but an eye socket behind it and an eyeball. So there's nothing supporting it. That's why it's the first to age. Another area that has um, odd colors is the eyebrows. So what I need to see is a little bit more of that skin blush underneath the eyebrows. So the eyebrows seem to be a little bit green compared to everything. And I know that's the color of the hair, but eyebrow hair is very different from hair hair on the body. Um, then you've got the lip, the lip redness should be the same kind of redness on the cheeks. So that means that if the lips, if this is the natural shade of the lips, you need to have a, more, a very close, very close to that shade for the, for the cheekbone. Right now you have something that's a bit orange. That's because I moved the, 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 the slider, yeah, but it was still originated at orange that the slider exaggerated it. So this color and this color need to be unified. So when you do skin realistically and someone says to you in a tutorial, hey, remember, realistic skin has more than one color in it. It's not just light beige, dark beige, and, and highlight beige. It's, um, it's, I, I, that's what I say. But remember that you still have to create a unison. You still have to make it look like it's the same piece of skin, not just a piece of skin out of different people. That same red, I'm going to throw it into the eyes and actually decrease the opacity. Because it's the same blood type. This is the same girl with the same skin over here as it is over here. She's the same girl here as she is over here. That means that we're going to have very, very similar temperatures and color patterns. <clears throat> so if you're going to bring some of that natural redness into her waterline, into her lower eyelid, up here, it all should be the color that comes out of the lips. It should all be a unified color. If you're going to choose a base tone for her skin tone, maybe it's this color, make sure that base tone is everywhere, shared by everything. You can have layers of color. You can bring in purples and greens and, and uh, the, the blush colors, but you still have to have very unified skin tone color that travels ac across the face. And if it's a pale person, it's always pushed towards the cools. Okay. Now let's run a test over it. The test is going to be the grayscale test. And I want to see if anyone can point out the issues here in the grayscale. Can anyone point out some issues happening here? Okay, let's not talk about One Punch Man. Let's not talk about irrelevant facts. Let's just try to answer the questions.
yes, no hair, because this is a study. This is part of a 14-day challenge study. So that's that we're not supposed to have hair when we're studying the face so that we can not worry about the hair. We worry about the hair later. We take on a different study. Right now they're just perfecting their knowledge of the face. It's a very efficient way of studying. No cast shadows. No bottom eyelid. Low value and contrast. Um, so there definitely is an imbalance in the contrast. I think the value, I mean there's an imbalance in the values. I think the, the contrast is fine. But what I need to see is that all the temperatures are the same. So she's got this excess of darkness here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a lightened layer. And I'm just going to correct that. Because this whole area is, is, is not as deep as this area here. This is part of the nose. So what you're telling me by darkening this, you're telling me that there is, from the side view, no separation between the eyes and the nose. They're part of the same kind of socket. When you unify like this, when you share shades like this, that's when we have kind of like an overthrow of the values. So over here, yeah, keep it dark because this is where the socket really happens. But over here and out, this is a whole other elevation. This and this cannot have the same value because this is deep and this is starting to escape that value range. It's starting to climb into a high nose. The nose sticks out the further, furthest in the face. All right, another area is the forehead. It's got close to no highlights on it. And the forehead is one of the light spots. That on switch that I talk about, really, really important. All right, and in every, in every highlight you add on the face, there needs to be some yellow because that's the warmth of the surrounding um, palette of the light source. We need to see some of that highlight on the lip and on the chin climbing upward. So this is a bit too much I have to erase away. This is what I usually do. That's my that's my method. I just add m more than I need and I erase away gradually until it looks right. So you'll see now we have a climb. We have high points that are actually exaggerated. So the contrast was fine. You could have done without it, but I still wanted an excuse to use that yellow on the skin. And the forehead also was getting close to no highlights on it at all. It's a forehead. It sticks right out. It's where the brows start. So that whole area is exposed to the light source. It doesn't have much of uh, detail on it. I think you focused a lot on the rest of the face. So don't spot render. I'm going to see if Sharpen Tool can give me some detail on the forehead. Some pores maybe. <clears throat> and then for the lower eyelid comment, I think that's a little more balanced now. The lower eyelid comment, um, it's true she has no lower eyelid, but that's fine. But I'm mostly concerned with the spherical shape of the eye. The eyes are very representational right now. Uh, not representational, very symbolic. So that means that you need to bring in that sphere a little bit and to square it off. It was too um, symbolic. The eye was too stretched out in a very symbolic shape, which is the typical shape of the eye when it's drawn, which is like a long, a long eye. I'll fix the irises because they got morphed, but I'm going to give the eyes a little bit of asymmetry to them because this eye is a little bit, this eyebrow is a little bit higher. This one is a little bit lower, so the fat is drooping down on this one, but this one has a bit more of an elevation. I think that looks a little more natural this way. Okay, so I'm going to copy this, go back to before the liquify, and erase so the eyes are spheres again. And you'll see in the before and after how different everything is. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine line. No, it's not that fine a line between uncanny and then normal. It's very easy to fall into uncanny. And that's understandable. It's just, I don't want you guys to accidentally not fall into uncanny. I want you to be aware of what uncanny is. Your knowledge is your power. So that means that you're never going to accidentally fall into it or accidentally create something pretty. I want you to consciously, with a set level of skill and a, and a conviction, to make these choices in your designs. I don't want you to accidentally draw something nice or accidentally draw something bad. 
These are rules. These are actual written in stone. Believe me, they're written in stone. You want to argue, we can argue here until the end of time, but they are written in stone because what we look outside every day, what we see outside every day is not uncanny. It's the realistic. So when you are learning, okay, I want to draw our skin more realistically, understand that you can't just work a month on how to draw skin realistically. You have to, before drawing that skin realistically, learn the face structure realistically. It's not just about the skin that makes an image realistic, but it's about the collective anatomy. So go ahead and learn and learn photorealism, but remember there's a great deal more to learn than what you think. And you will fall into the uncanny because these rules are set in stone. Realism rules are set in stone. That's it. We know the biology of a human being. We know the light and how light affects form. Those, that's it. They're set in stone unless you want to change physics. Unless you want to change the rules of physics. That's not possible. You don't have that power. Okay? So don't argue. These are the rules that make your images look better. They transform them from this to this. They make them look more realistic. This is closer to a photograph. This is something if you see it in a movie you would feel attached to it. When you have disproportion, lack of proportion in a movie like this, what we have here is very similar to what we have in this movie. Which This movie was compared to the Uncanny Valley a lot. Because what they did was they, yeah, they got those normal... Um, they pushed the realism as far as possible, but they kind of kept the stiffness there so that's why it felt uncanny those tiny little micro movements and the gestures look felt really uncanny and look at the eye size if a kid had this eye size it would not it, it there there are, it's very close to uncanny the proportions are a little bit off they didn't really study the size of a mouth compared to a um, of the eyes and children, the size of the head compared to the body so they tried to keep it as realistic as possible in certain areas and in other areas they fell off and that's what leads to uncanny. So this is very difficult to relate to because they push the skin, they push the lighting, they push the realism, they push the colors, and then everything else fell off and didn't meet to that level of realism in other aspects. So that's when you have something that is uncanny. All right? <clears throat> like for this character, I think everything was fine except for the mouth width. I think they exaggerated that. When you're going full on, you know, all the way realism, you have no chance to use character tropes. You have no chance to use exaggerations in, in, in gestures or exaggerations in uh, especially micro gestures and micro movements but exaggerations in proportion. Like if you're trying to make it one character has bigger eyes than the other. It's such a small little change before you get that realism. Now, I can just go on about this but before, after. Um, I think this is a lot easier to relate to. You still have those subtle greens and purples, it's just they're not exaggerated. Um, if, she, if you want her to have more pink, like you want her to have that super pink um, cheek, you can still do that. That you can get away with because that happens in the real world. You can do that, you can bring that back, but now everything has a nice plate to it that this pink doesn't feel like it's overwhelming the entire image. Because that pink was everywhere down here and then suddenly you had green. You had red versus green inside the same skin tone? What happened? That's a complementary, those are complementary tones. Green and red don't, don't have fun together. They, they hate each other. So remember it like that. Are there any questions? OC has a question. What? Huh? What? What? I don't draw realism, so I'm fine. Uh, realism will be the death of, death of me. Yeah, even back when it came out. <clears throat> it's creepy, but I still love it. Yeah, it's an amazing movie, but I, I think they could have done different things with all of that. Um, it's like, it's you know what I see that movie as? The Polar Express is like getting realistic textures in Minecraft. It looks nice, but you know it's Minecraft. That's the problem, is that it felt like a 3D model. It didn't feel real, even though they thought that they were making us feel like it was real. It was, I think it was, um, it was misguided. <clears throat> uh, does anyone have any questions regarding these changes? Can anyone summarize what, what I talked about today? Drawing horror through Uncanny Valley. Should the jaw be in more shadow? Um, yes, I think it should. 
uh, what I would do is select inverse, hide, no, hide, <clears throat> darken, I'll choose one of these shades here and just um, slowly kind of lead the jaw outside of the, of the highlights. So my brush shrinks the, 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 the closer to the edge of the face that I get. So shrinking my brush on the way out. I'm going to do the same thing with the neck on the outsides of the neck. So before, after, the face feels a lot more realistic this way. And what I would erase, good observation by the way, excellent job, pat on the back. What I would erase though is the, the chin, because the chin does, it's, it's one of the oily areas on the face of the T-zone and it is going to get some highlights on it. So before, after. And then one full before, after, before, after. All right. <clears throat> so um, I know you've said that photos aren't always the most aesthetic. Uh, does the same go for if the character were to be wearing makeup? You'd have to just adjust the makeup colors. Um, I don't understand what you're saying. Is it bad to have too much makeup or are you saying when we try to make things look super realistic we have to adjust the makeup and the way we do the makeup you can have crazy makeup and realism I mean that whatever makeup does today it just pulls it out of pa paintings like that's pretty much what we're doing we're painting our face so the principles of painting is what goes into the principles of makeup like where girls place eyeshadow they have to learn what kind of eye shape they have and what their eye shape can manage in eyeshadow if they can pull it off or not you can't put almond eye eyeshadow onto an inset eye or a deep set eye or a close set eye. It's a very different kind of makeup for each person. So it all pulls out of art. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure if that answers your question, honestly. <clears throat> Green and red hate each other. Anatomy before rendering. Green is found where skin is translucent. Yellow is everywhere. Excellent, Asma. I expect no less from you. Uh, yes, a question. You say the before smile is representational and the after is more realistic, but when you look at photos at an IRL, looks, uh, looks, it looks like the before. So how can you tell the difference? It does not look like the before, uh, Diana, because what, what happens in realistic smiles um, uh, is that realistically in photos, the whole face smiles with it. And what was pulling, for the, what was canceling out the smile here is the fact that there was no jawline. So we, so I gave her a natural look, but if she were to smile, what would happen is we can still make her smile. We just have to make sure it's affecting every other part of the, of the anatomy. So yeah, she smiles like this. Oops. This lip becomes stretched out, so it becomes thinner. And what happens is there's a tad of elevation, just a bit of elevation. And we have laugh, laugh lines. And the eyes are affected. And the nostril is affected. Filter, liquefy. The nostrils flare. And eyes squint. Sorry, I'll get the old eyes. She's looking up, I know. Give me a sec. So, the eyes squint and that smile becomes complete because we're unifying everything. So, um, before. No, this is not the before. I still right. <clears throat> Sorry, it's a bit messy. I have to do it really fast, but um, before, after. And you can make that smile go even more. I mean, her eyes are a little squinted, but you can make that smile expand even higher and show more teeth and flare more of the nose and have the eyebrows involved. But I think... Um, it, you'd have to work really closely with your reference if you want to do maximum realism. Close to the reference, you're just going to have to work with the reference or else just learn the basic form tropes for when you're drawing a character smiling. You don't have to learn all of the, the maximum amount of 
muscle behavior and a smile in order to make it look realistic. You just have to learn the basics, which is the fact that the eyes squint a little bit and the, um, the nose flares a little bit. And of course, there's the laugh line, um, the smile lines, not wrinkles. Don't confuse them with wrinkles. And the fact that the teeth show and all of that and the, and the lips stretch out, all of that stuff. Um, proportions over rendering unified skin colors, less saturation, avoid symmetry. Good job. Um, never draw anything by accident. I know what you're doing all the time. Uncanny is not your friend. Oh yeah, know what you're doing all the time. Be aware. Be aware as aware as possible. Um, hi, Chris. <clears throat> um, oh, hi, Trigger. Uh, proportions are running. Sorry, um, I meant, is it a good idea to use the Uncanny Valley concept to make creepy art? Yes, it is. It's a very good idea. Um, I think they did use it in one movie. I don't know what it was, but they used this super realistic clay, and everything else looked so uh, unrealistic, but that one bad guy had like these crazy, crazy wrinkles on his face, but his head was a little small. Uh, his head was a little big, but he had super crazy realism, and it looked really creepy because you had that realism on that, those wrinkles on top of a really massive head and a really small body. It looked creepy as all hell. It's unsettling. Because you think that that is this in real life, and if you see people in real life, um, and and you know people who have deformities, people who have small head, large head, um, just from their birth, you you'll feel that un unsettled kind of feeling. But it's even worse if the person isn't realistic. If if you know that they're models, but they have that realism, but at the same time, they're you're supposed to believe that they're real. It's a it's very unsettling. So yeah, you can use it as a as a tool for horror or the macabre. Uh, the posters in Attack on Titan are like that. Uh, oh my god, you can rewind. It didn't refresh for me until now. Uh, the nostrils look kind of off balance to me too for some reason. Um, yeah, the nostrils are not the best nostrils. Um, you really need to look up some basic form. I think you've oversized the septum. You've kind of drawn the nostrils a little symbolically. They don't feel like they're really open or that they can function. And there is no real separation between the nostrils and the tip of the nose. Um, it feels like the nose is drooping from the side. There's a lot of stuff that you can improve on structure-wise. So diagnostic, stop drawing skin realistically. Step as far away from color as possible. Rework your knowledge and basic anatomy and, and skeletal structure on the face. Work on form. You still have form problems. You are not ready for pushing realism as far as possible. Um, sorry, that sounds harsh. It sounds like um, you know, like a severe diagnosis. But I, I really want. To, you have such potential in your rendering. You have amazing eye for detail. I really want you to reinforce all of that great talent you have with some. Uh, great knowledge of under and understanding of, of uh, form and basic skeletal structure. Um, what you did over here, I'm not going to forgive you for it because I know by looking at the way you drew the eyes and the beautiful way you mastered the, the hair on the eyebrows, not too detailed, enough relief, you're, I'm not going to be easy on you. And I'm going to say step as far away from all of that as possible for now. And just focus on your grayscale, focus on the painting, painting the face realistically before using uh, photo guidance. The 14-day challenge, please remember, it is not a photorealism challenge. It is a, a form study challenge, meaning you study the forms of the face. You, me you memorize principles of the face. So it's, it's not to do with photographs. It's more to do with the skeleton plus the skin and the, and the flesh and all of that. Um, we have a painting here by one more, one more face drawing by um, Abu Dhar, who is a uh, regular user here, um, and and he used the, the, uh, the portrait, uh, portrait Studio to make this. So I don't know if you guys know about Portrait Studio. I'll show you a little bit on Portrait Studio in a second. It's a program that we created, um, but uh, you have a couple of issues here, Abu, and um, I'm just going to cover them now real quick. I don't know what kind of angle you use with the light source, but I think you kind of deviated away from what the light source that you took the picture of the light source that you took from your reference. So what you do when you have eyebrows and you want to add that intensity in the stare, you have to make sure you're adding that intensity without leaving the brow structure. 
brows. It looks like she painted outside of her brows. So I know you were ta you were talking about, about this character. She's not over painted, not over decorated. She's a very uh, rugged dragon slayer, a dragon tamer. That that massive scar on her head has given her this really really intense hairline. I love that. It's so intense. Um, but you really cannot over exaggerate the brows. Just that she looks you know angry. You can still do a lot with very very subtle um, expression. So I'm going to fix that up. I think the general proportions are great. You read your reference great. Um, another thing that's making her feel aged, that she's aged with a hairline that's aging, is the distance between the lips and the nose. I think you have to keep that close so she looks, still looks feminine. And another thing that makes her look feminine is the little bump or the, the slenderness of the nose as well that'll help her look feminine. So before it was very masculine, like a very um, kind of effeminate man but now I've kind of fixed that and I'm gonna give her even more of a stern look I think some of these scars have given her a smile and I don't know if she's supposed to be smiling or not but I'm gonna use darken here to kinda of just prepare the plate for shadows in the eye socket shadows on the lower half over here shadows on the on the lower lip leading all the way up and then I'm going to erase away what I don't want and then I'm going to follow up with some highlights in the right areas so some areas that would be getting some highlights remember the on switch you have to look out for that in your reference when you use portrait studio because what happens is if you if you know the, the areas where light usually hits because you know those are high points on the bone structure you know that those are areas that are going to be the first to be illuminated. So one of these areas is the bone structure here. Now the reason why she looks like she's smiling is because there's something of a laugh line over here. So I'm going to smooth that out and then I'm going to carry a another light source uh, signature over here. This is working like, I know this is like your the shadow but it's starting to read as a line so just trying to ease up on that contrast a little bit and keep it in only areas where there's really lots of shadow and um, I think you should make her looking up because her eyebrow is pointing up and when we look up at something our eyebrow kind of just tries to get out of the way so I think what you should do is make her oopsie flatten make her look up a little bit that'll make her look a little bit more intense and you can kind of complete it. This is how you dress up a study. So I, I know sometimes I, 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 and I still say it and I say it now, stop worshipping your studies, try, stop trying to make a masterpiece out of your studies every time you do a study. It has to become a full illustration. Um, but if you want to, the best place to start off is the expression. Okay, so this, this shadow that I just threw in here, this is the eye socket connecting into the temple. And then this shadow here needs to be complete because this is also part of the eye socket. So these are all the areas that I tell that I'd say are the light spots. The nose needs to have a shinier kind of and sort of trying to get a, a more feminine look as we go. A shinier touch on the nose because the nose is not only oily but it also sticks out the furthest. And then, yeah, we've got this piece, but make sure that the eye socket is still casting its shadow evenly across the face. Across the, I mean, the eye socket shadow is casting on top of the eye. Just like that. Because there's a massive cast shadows here, so we're going to get the same thing over here. As for scars, you don't need to, all you need is a, is a, is a value change for scars. So if this is the value of this area, scars are shinier skin. So what happens is to create a scar, let's throw a scar on her cheek here, all you need to do is just get a lighter shade of skin and you'll get that scar look. What happens next is just this, the fact that the scar is a depression, a very, very minuscule depression and you just have to create that shadow on the side of it. And this area here is a little bit darker than the rest and that's kind of how you create a scar by getting it lighter than the skin around it if it's in a dark area and darker than the skin around it if it's in a dark if it's in a light area 
and just generally make sure it is as sharp as you need it to be because scars are really, really sharp things. Um, they're, uh, have you ever seen burn marks? They're, they're very uh, jagged and they're not, they don't feel like organic patterns, they feel more like geometric patterns. So the more sharpness that you bring in in the render, the more realistic the scar will feel. So don't just, you know, do this for scars and then give it a little bit of a shadow. That doesn't feel natural, it looks more like a tattoo. A scar is a very, very slight pigmentation change. <clears throat> the scar casts shadows on the side of it. And the more subtle the scar is, the more um, interesting it'll be because you kind of have to look a little hard to see it. And that's kind of how you make scars. Do not outline the scars thinking that that's how you get them to read. That's not how you make scars read. Okay, so what I would do is just bring down the contrast over here. And over here, since it's a highlighted area, I'll just throw some highlight on this part of the scar. Make sure the scar, it works like a contour line. Make sure the scar follows the contour of the cheek. So if there's a high point in the cheek, that's how the scar is going to travel. So the scar will travel this way. Okay. Um, I really want to get rid of that smile. I don't think she was smiling when you described her to me, but if she is, then you, you did well. And again, I don't know if she smiled. The side of the nose gets a longer, uh, more sharp highlight to it, and this entire forehead area gets a little bit more highlights um, to them as well because this cast shadow right here is a very specific shadow that sits in between the eyes because that area is a depression. Okay, so a couple of, of, of just pointers here and there. I recommend if you really want to go high contrast, full drama, um, to go darker, um, as dark as possible in the darkest areas. Remember the cave, um, just the darkest points get some extra level of darkness. So the dark spot here in her eye definitely gets some darkness. So this is how you bring in detail by pushing the contrast a step further. I kind of see her as like a Gara character so she might have that little extra um, eyeliner or makeup. So take a look at, you know, crazy makeup, uh, costume makeup for, you know, what you see in Hollywood and cosplay cosplay. Okay. And I would just uh, complete that shadow here with a bit more darkest part of the eyebrow. And don't forget that the eyes have a an eye the eyeball has a cast shadow on it as well from the eye line. And then you've got the, the lights of the eye. The water line. And the tear duct. Make sure you're not using um, alien values, meaning values that don't exist. So you're not going to bring this highlight in here because this whole area is dark. You bring in a, a slightly lighter shade and it still reads because that area is so dark as it is. But try to complete it. See if you can complete it. Um, for the eyebrows, don't just leave them as, you know, um, smudges. Try to bring in some detail there. On the edge of the lips, bring in a dark spot. And that's sort of how you push the detail, by bringing in a deeper and deeper dark spot each time. These are the darkest areas of the, of the face, so they're going to have the darkest, I mean the deepest areas of the face, so they're going to have the darkest shades. Okay. The lip might benefit from a shade darker. And of course, back to my handy dandy brush. The chin needs some highlights to it. OK. 
Okay. So I'm sorry about the technical difficulties today. There was just so many. I just never had all of that just fall on my head. I usually know my way around Open Broadcaster, but YouTube was giving me such a glitch, and I thought it was on my end, and it was just YouTube glitching. And so I'm sorry that made the class a little bit delayed. We lost some time, but um, I think I'm going to get a hand of the uh, handle of this um, soon, so this won't happen again. Class for those who are regular or not regulars here, for those who don't really know how this runs, uh, class is every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and from now on it's going to be available on YouTube. This line, just get rid of it. You don't need that. Turn it into a shade, and then throw that shade all the way over, and then turn that into an edge. That's how you replace a line. You don't need all that extra business because this edge, look at that power, it created that, it's over 9,000, um, it, it, it's, it's the right amount of contrast that you need, so that's all you need, that's, that, that's it, I don't want a, a shade darker as the further out it goes, and the contrast was created by that sharp, unblended edge, same thing over here, everywhere else, you don't need any extra shades, just the edge, just remember that the edge can do a lot for you. And don't be so scared of not drawing within the lines. There's no lines. There's just sculpting. <clears throat> um, if I had more time, I would work on this. But you do live with me, so I'm going to just steal this from you. <laughs> um, it's a little bit more shadow, just kind of pushing her character across. You might want to throw in a Cupid's bow for more detail. And um, probably a line around the. Because the only point of detail at this point is her eye looking up. So you might want to even, to make her look even more mad, open her eye a little further. And give her that, uh, that stern, severe look. Okay? So, I don't know. I should keep these changes. I'm probably just going to keep them. Just give it over to you. Okay. So, Control C, Control V. So, oh shit. So, are these the changes? <clears throat> I didn't copy the right things. Son of a bitch. But, uh, it's okay. Yeah, son of a bitch. It's okay. Um, send this to you. I hope the changes are good. But you see before, sort of how you had the eyes, they were a little bit kind of symbolic and they weren't really telling a story. I mean, I mean, about the expression, they weren't telling a story. I mean, what is she feeling? What are we looking at here? But a couple, like a little bit more focused in the eyes. The expression starts in the eyes, so get a good hold over the realism in the eyes. Um, that's where the expressions start, really. In my opinion, it's all about the eyes and the eyebrows with expressions. You can do so much with those two. Um, without having to over exaggerate the smile or depend too much on the nostril and the nostril is not what expresses an emotion <laughs> um, sometimes yeah it's like a minor part minor little accessory to emotion but altogether it's all it all starts in the eye so if you if you're like okay I'm, I'm done the plate I've done the large brush work what do I do next <clears throat> you you go for a contrast um, go to the max contrast, starting with the dark spots in the eyes. Render the eyes after that. Use the next level of shadows that is, that is accessible to you. That doesn't mean canceling out all the midtones you've already established. That means jumping in and bringing in some shadows only where you need them, and that's knowledge of the dark spots there that'll help you. And then focus on the eyebrows or the eyebrows doing with the eyes to express, and then the nose, and then the mouth. The mouth should not be what you're depending on for the expression, unless you're trying to draw a crazy person. Uh, where this is used is in the Jenks concept art. I think the mouth is really what carries it, along with her eyes. So if you guys look at the Jenks concept art, um, or Jenks uh, splash, 
You see the expression starts with the eyes, but the mouth really completes it with that little thing, and the nose really is not doing much, but you see how the eyes, that's where it really starts, the expression. The eyebrow peak, the fact that there's white above the pupils, that's another sign of madness, just like what I did with that girl, and then a character, or anger, and then the mouth. Right, but we see we're not depending on the mouth. It's a pretty normal looking mouth. It's not a crazy mouth. But when it comes to her madness and her character design, it's all in the eyes. Okay? Over here too, lots of white above. You see that's where the expression is, is really preserved and then the mouth here is super exaggerated. <clears throat> but that's the cartoony touch in there and their splash art. But, um, that, yes, Beowulf was super uncanny. That movie was just off the charts uncanny. <clears throat> but thanks everyone for coming. Have a great day. Bye-bye.